How to reduce service TCO by focusing on consumers. In this course you will learn how views on service from consumers and service providers differ from each other. How service interface granularity impacts service use, reuse and TCO. Why increased numbers of consumers rises the risk of changes in the service interface. How a web service interface code may be modified with backward compatibility by an extension that does not impact existing consumers. How an entitlement to data may be implemented inside an XML message. Views on a service. In a service-oriented ecosystem, a service success is defined by consumers. They drive the service market. Consumers do not know and do not want to know if it is difficult or not to support the service and whether the support is costly. For a service provider, the picture is different. If the cost of ownership of the service gets close to or exceeds the revenue, this service is qualified as failed regardless opinions of the consumers. Well, not exactly. Support of a service is not a service function and it is not responsible for it. So, it is the support team that is failing first while the service design may only be blamed second. So a service owner or provider has to work on reducing support and maintenance cost, which includes, among others, a cost of adoption to constantly changing consumers' needs and requirements. A cost of service development and a cost of service support and maintenance constitute a total cost of ownership, TCO, of the service. Since development cost cannot be changed after the service is released to consumers, a TCO is influenced by the maintenance costs the most. Consumer base of a service. We define a service via business functionality it provides and a real world effect it generates. The functionality may have features. While the functionality stays the same, we can talk about different versions of the service that constitute different combinations of features. If the core business functionality changes, we have a new service regardless of features. We know that service interface is a sort of programmatic contract between service body, implementation, and the interfaces of service consumers. Changing a service interface is the least desirable case, but if a service consumer requires changes in the service features, changes of the interface are inevitable. Alternatively, a service may represent a new interface each time it offers new versions. However, a number of interfaces will grow in the progression that would be unmanageable just for combinations of three, five, seven features, and the cost of their support will skyrocket. In this course, I will explain a reasonably simple and inexpensive solution for this problem. I will show how to reduce TCO by designing a web service interface in a scalable way without increasing complexity and maintenance cost. Service Interface Granularity The dominant majority of service interface changes relates to the service interface granularity. Usually, the more granular an interface is, the more operations it makes public and more strictly defined messages it offers to consumers. An extreme granularity is known as API. From the years of programming experience, we know that the most reusable API is the most difficult to change. Reusability of an API is a trap that prevents fast and frequent API updates. The more difficult changes, the higher the TCO. In a contrast, the more coarse granular a service interface is, the more variations of data and operations it allows. A granularity of a service interface is a matter of art 
rather than a formally guided practice. It is a trade-off in every case and has to take into consideration not only coding requirements but also performances, network capabilities and service lifecycle management. Some people believe that a coarse-grained service interface promotes the risk of massive programmatic mistakes. They think that such interfaces disallow concrete compilation control over the information passed through the widely open operations. Also, they believe that a coarse-grained interface reduces capabilities of the service because fewer functions or operations are available to the consumer. I argue that such concerns are nothing more than an inertia of thinking in object-oriented coding, which doesn't necessarily work for function-oriented SOA services. In services, not interface operations, but message schemas possess the strong type control, and this control may be even stronger than in such programming languages like c -sharp or Java. A granularity and type control of interfaces message schemas is not a responsibility of developers and automated compilers, but rather the design work. As such, message schemas pass through multiple design reviews and controls, which minimize the chance of mistakes. Finally, skeptics usually forget about well-known command pattern that allows an exchange of messages carrying both data and operations to be applied to this data. This is the level of granularity needed for services. One consumer, one service feature. Let's consider a use case where an SOA service with a web service interface valuates an investment fund in a hypothetical company called The Enterprise. Currently, a valuation is needed for fund processing. The business client has indicated that not all requirements for the valuation are formulated yet, but the valuation operation has to be available to end users as soon as possible. The development team recognizes that the valuation would be used and reused in multiple business scenarios over the time, and some of them aren't known yet. If the number of actions associated with the valuation grows, a traditional solution is to add a new operation to the existing service interface, or create a new interface, or even create a new specialized service. As we said before, if an interface changes, all existing consumers have to recompile and retest their service client code right away. If new interface is represented, some of existing consumers who need this new functionality have to recompile and retest their service client code in the future. The same relates to the new service. All extra compilations and testing constitute a service TCO increase. Moreover, if consumers of such a service are external, the service risks losing its consumer convenience, reputation, and finally, the consumers. Coarse granular service interface. The solution to this problem is in a design of a valuation service with only one operation that will be able to accept alternative information defined by individual schemas. If modification of the information is backward compatible, newly added functionality will not disturb existing consumers and will serve only those who need it. Also, maintenance of schemas is cheaper than maintenance of services because we have standardized and widely available schema maintenance systems and tools in the market. As the overall result, with this solution, we can not only address new business needs, but also reduce TCO of that service. Let me show how we can realize this idea. We will start with an example of wisdom which we treat as a baseline. Service and Interface Baseline The development team has created a web services interface for the valuation service shown in listings 1 and 2 and defined only one operation, Valuate Fund. 
Please do not worry about the code in the slide. It is available for download from the website. It's important to notice that the operation name reflects the valuation action for the funds, i.e. it is specific enough. The operation is associated with request, response and failure messages and with corresponding message XML schemas. The design goal of such interface is a loose coupling the message's XML schemas with the interface's operation. Thus, all schemas are imported. That is, they may be modified independently from the service and its interface. You can see that each message has its own schema and namespace defined in different files. Message Schema Baseline Let's look at the messages closer. In our example, a web service uses the same port, endpoint and port type. The port type always contains the same operation with the same basic request, response, failure messages. In the listings 3, 4 and 5, we find XML schemas for the request message, the response and the failure messages. The business action for fund valuation is represented by the element Valuate. It contains three sub-elements that detail the action by spe specifying a fund name as well as the fund and requester identifiers. Two consumers, two features of the same service. I return to the story about the enterprise. This time, the development team received a request to store valuation results in addition to returning them to the consumers. The team decided to implement this storing feature by using extensions of the message schemas. Extension – Request for Storing so, the operation store valuation results has to be implemented as an extension to the basic message XML schema. The extension of the schema is imported as a new namespace that defines a composite action store. Let's discuss the implementation specifics shown in listings 6 and 7. First, all elements related to actions are defined in XML elements that are all optional. This means a service consumer isn't obliged to specify or recognize any one of them if it's not needed. The basic response message reserves empty request element for such case. Second, all of the schemas have been designed to expose the namespaces in imported instance documents as directed by element form default with value qualified. This points to the fact that all related XML documents deal with different namespaces. The service consumer can choose whether to use particular namespaces or skip related elements, i.e. to use the extension of the service or not with no harm to the existing code. Finally, any element related to a new action can be added to the All tag independently from the others. For example, a service consumer can specify only the action store without the action valuate or both in any order. This is possible because the service maintains its internal state. The service is stateless as far as the consumer's invocations go. No state is saved between consecutive calls to the valuate fund operation. But the results of each business action are cached in the service until the response message is formed and returned. The service description explains that all business actions in one invocation are performed for the same valuation. In the hidden service implementation, execution of any action checks if the valuation was done already and reuses it in a composed action. As a result of such design, a service consumer can choose to work with any available schema extensions and isn't forced by the service provider to update to a new version of the service. 
Thus, the organization can schedule and gracefully manage a transition onto a new service functionality for all existing consumers in accordance with the service governance policies. More consumers, more features of the same service. When developers were ready to release the valuation service, the business client specified a new requirement. It said, when the valuation results store, certain business consumers and other services have to be notified about this event. Also, some business consumers interested in the notification may not be necessary among existing consumers of the valuation service. The development team was consistent and implemented new requirements using the same method of extension of the message schemas. This allowed to minimize an impact of new functionality on existing service consumers and therefore reduce TCO. Extension Request for Notification Therefore, the request message schema has to include new business notification action represented by the new element Notify as shown in listing 8. Action Notify is defined in the listing 9. It contains addressee ID element which stands for an identifier of the addressee to be notified. If it's not specified, notification is omitted. If its value is null, the notification may go to everybody as a broadcast. Otherwise, the notification has to go to the specified unlimited list of addressees as a multicast. Fault message extension for notification. Obviously, the notification may fail while valuation succeeds. To cover this scenario, the service interface has to include an additional failure message or an existing failure message may be extended as shown in listings 10 and 11. So, fund valuation exception can contain either a service, resource, unavailable or valuation notification failure alert. Summarizing the case, I can say that the development team implemented two new business features for the fund valuation service, particularly store and notify, and did this with no changes to the service interface. It was done by importing additional namespaces into the request message schema and changing the failure schema. Service consumers who needed only a subset of service features can ignore unrelated schema extensions. Since all elements of the extensions are optional, they don't interfere with the basic schema, namespace, and may be ignored by consumers who are not interested in them. Entitlement to data Another resource of keeping service TCO low is a security-aware design. For many years, development practice postponed and even ignored security and tried adding it in the last moment. As we know now, adding security later on is an extremely expensive exercise. If a system, application or service considers security by design regardless when and what security method may be applied, the efforts of applying security protection to such an asset are easy and cheap. This allows to add or change security methods along the life cycle of the asset if threats change and do it with minimal investments, i.e. reduce TCO again. Assume that the enterprise becomes a global organization and starts business units in different countries. One possible work scenario comprises a business analyst in the US uses the valuation service to work with fund shares that belong to a citizen of Singapore. According to Singapore law, private financial information can't be seen by others outside of Singapore without special agreement. So, to reuse the valuation service, the enterprise's compliance requires special data access control over the data access. This control is supposed to hide some return data based on certain business rules.
This is a typical data visibility or a data entitlement scenario that requires an access control at the data level per service consumer and service result. Use of the service internationally versus locally means a change in the business execution context for this case. Thus, we may need to consider a special service response version to be used in this new execution context. The service provider shouldn't decide when to respond with a special message version because it's outside the scope of the business service tasks. A service consumer also doesn't necessarily know up front where the fund's share owner resides, what the local laws are, and which response version of the data format to request. Instead, an entitlement service is supposed to be involved to specify whether the returned data should be hidden and how. Response Message Extension To prepare the valuation service for data protection, the development team built a response message XML schema extension shown in listings 12 and 13. This extension can obfuscate the valuation result, making it unreadable. Initially, this schema extension is known only to consumers working in the international area. Later, there would be a plan for a graceful transition of all service consumers onto the new response version. The entitlement service distinguishes between consumers working locally and in foreign areas and informs the valuation service which response schema it has to use. Thus, the ability to offer different data, data visibility via a message schema extension allows convenient dynamic on-demand data access control in services. The wider a service gets reused, the greater the chance that different data visibility will be required. What you have learned. A service interface with a single generic operation can be used and reused for extended service functionality. This has a dual effect. A service vendor provider can add new functionality by operating with the namespace extensions. A service consumer can decide which extension to use, with which functionality, and when. To upgrade to new functionality, a service consumer has only to change the message passing procedure for dealing with the new namespace. Manipulating message details via different namespaces makes it possible to control data visibility inside the message. That is, different data can become visible to or hidden from different consumers based on their entitlement to information. Entitlement services can decide when and how to apply access control to the data in the message and use different message extensions for different service consumers. A TCO of a service with an interface that has a single generic operation is much less than any other solutions for extending service functionality. At the same time, such service has longer lifetime and can serve a wider community of consumers, which also makes its ROI higher than for traditional multi-operational service. Thank you. Please allow me to thank you for your time and attention. I hope you have found useful information in the course. If you have any related questions, please post them in the related forum on the same website and I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. Also, you are very welcome to post your opinion and considerations about the course in the same forum. If you have a consulting proposal with regard to this or another course or blog post, please use Contact Me Instant Messaging on the same website to contact me directly. Thank you again and good luck.